Holy crap. Good morning, good morning, Kelly. Oh, Manny, thank God. I have an emergency here on my hands and I need your help. Kelly, Kelly. Oh my gosh. I've been telling you so many times, empty pots are not an emergency. But oh, I know, you're right. You're right, it's not an emergency. And I feel so much better hearing your voice. Listen, I have this pot and it's, yeah, it is a pot emergency. And it's so cute. And I just need something really special to put in it. What do you got for me? Well, like I was telling you, Kelly, uh, for that empty pot, I am just recommending you a lot of these beautiful aeoniums that they come from all over the world. Some of these beautiful specimens for pots, for many years, you don't have to do hardly anything. Very little water very little attention and they always provide beautiful color especially when you mix the bright colors with the regular green colors and hello hello kelly kelly oh my gosh kelly finally i <laughs> Hey guys, it's Kelly at Garden Discovery. I'm here with Manny and he's going to find me an Aeonium, a special Aeonium to put in my pot. Can you show me what you got? Let's start right here, Kelly. I'm going to recommend you three of my favorite ones. This is Aeonium Medusa. Such a beautiful bright red color. And that one, when you may mix the Aeonium Medusa with Sunburst or this one right here, and a little green in between, or the black desert rose, I guarantee. Such a beautiful mix, colors, so they give contrast with each other. That's why aeoniums are the future plant of the landscape out there, Kelly. Are they hard to take care of, Manny? Aeoniums, they are very smart plants. Some places, they get mealybugs, mildew, aphids, but use any organic product you know to keep those bugs away and they are not hard at all. And do they like hot or cold weather? In my knowledge, they do good through the year, all year around, but summertime you have to water really good and they stay really healthy. Many people think aeoniums, they only grow in winter time, but it's, I disagree with that. Because every company that I know that grow aeoniums, as long as they water them properly, they always grow beautiful. So Manny, I need something really special for my pot. What are these aeoniums? This one is aeonium sunburst. A very well-known aeonium out there that many people like. That one is, let's call it the sunburst from Korea or China, which is Asia somewhere, uh, which is going to be a beautiful plant. That, that is, gonna... is gorgeous. I love that. that and is that the same behind it? No, that one is a different one. The lady who, who, that I bought that one from, she gave me the name, I just can't remember the name of that one. But any of these aeoniums with the black desert rose, this one right here, this is also a Korean aeonium, that one right there, this one right here, this is local companies from here, California, this one right here, that one right there, the lily pad. Uh, I mean, all these aeoniums, the Fasi aeonium canadiense, this is one of my favorite ones. Many people don't have a clue about these beautiful species. But they are beautiful species. Gorgeous. The rosettes are really big on that. Oh, huge giants they grow. Very <laughs> huge. And like I was telling you about aeoniums, uh, aeoniums to me, they are just beautiful plants to add in the garden, pots, flower beds, planters. They always do good. They're just absolutely gorgeous. And I just love the variation that these have. Are these new hybrids? Those are new hybrids they make in Korea, in China, Japan, uh, Thailand. So several different countries like Portugal, Italy, Spain, Central and South America, even U.S., United States of America and Mexico. They are investing huge in these type of plants because they understand the huge giant business that is coming in the future for homeowners. Well, they're absolutely gorgeous, and you can see why they would just bring that landscape up a notch or two. That's right. Well, let me give you 
let me show you one that is one of my favorite ones. See? Sometimes we pay a lot of money for some of these eoniums. This eonium right here, I pay $400. Sometimes we don't care if they are expensive because we know that's a beautiful plant. So homeowners, they like to see something different. Eventually, it's going to be cheap for homeowners, but for now, it is a little pricey. But on beauty, there is no such a thing of pricey. Are you propagating those, Manny? That one, definitely, I'm going to try to propagate thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands I of those I can't wait. Animals. Do you have any of those for sale? Or are you just waiting until you propagate before you start selling those? These eoniums, they're gonna be available, I'm gonna say by next year, beginning of oh, next spring. Oh, that's awesome. Yep. Great. Ta-da, Kelly, here I am again. What else you wanna know about eoniums? Well, I wanna know why it's so special, why, why it would be such a special thing to have these eoniums in my pot in my garden. Well, remember, I told you, some of these unique specimens, like an example, the, this aeonium is called the penguin. Penguin aeonium is a beautiful species, bright color. And if you mix the penguin with the black desert rose and the nice variegated ones like these, you're going to make a beautiful pot, Kelly. Manny, are you propagating these that, that you're standing by? Ah, very good question, Kelly. Um, those eoniums, 100%, we're going to have to cultivate these. We're going to have to propagate. And they are so easy to propagate. Let me give you an idea. You cut one eonium too far down the trunk, that little trunk is not going to grow back. But if you cut it near the rosette, leaving chlorophyll in the trunk, the trunk is going to get cover of new babies. So it's a good message to you and all our followers kelly stay in a 15 gallon size pot like any of these pots your eoniums they all is gonna do beautiful so i recommend you to get in between 10 gallon size pot to 15 gallon size pot and your eoniums they're gonna be so beautiful let me share with you this eonium right here is such a beautiful variegated uh, eonium that is considered a unique diamond for your pots so keep in mind that one and also the mini aeoniums like these i just can't think about all the names right now because there is so many species but i recommend you any of these little mini aeoniums and what is the one right by your foot that's kind of a peach and yellow color oh this one the one right here oh this one yes what the, are those that one you know what the the broker that i bought them from uh, she gave me the name. I can uh, record that in my gigabytes yet, but soon I will have the name for you. Manny, the best thing about dividing plants is that you can give them as gifts to people, and giving is always a great thing. Can you show us the right way to trim these so that we can propagate them? I uh, don't want to do it the wrong way. Absolutely. Very, very good question, Kelly. Uh, I'm going to share with you and people how to do the best way to succeed the propagation of eoniums without killing the mother every time you cut the eoniums look in the bottom where you're gonna cut them if you look the trunk there is one part that it looks really young but if you look farther back it's getting old the trunk when you cut too farther down you are, you are not leaving chlorophyll in the part of the top so that's why your mother plant is gonna die. But if you cut it near the green, leaving a little green right there, those eoniums, they are gonna grow. You can see we are cutting this eonium. Sometimes if you leave two, three leaves like this, a couple leaves like that, that's okay too. Don't, don't worry about, about cutting too far down. And like I said, because if you cut them too far down, eoniums, they don't grow back. You can see, no, no babies. But if you cut it, with short nipple and long trunk over here, this is what it happens. See the long trunk and the mother plant? Mm -hmm. They grow back. Too short, they die. So mm. people cannot lose their mother plant. This is really, really good information, Manny. And so we want to make sure that we're cutting it as close to the aeonium head as we can. Yes, 
the closest to the top of the head. And the longer the trunk you leave in the mother plant, like I say, even if you leave a couple green leaves, I show you. You just cut the top off of that. See, the head is gone. But you will see this mother plant is going to get covered with lots of babies eventually. You can see the cuttings we cut, right Kelly? Now look how easy it is to propagate those cuttings. What I do is once I fill up the pots with soil, I poke a little uh, soft hole in every center of every pot like this. Uh -huh. And the reason why I do it, so minimize hurting the cutting you did from those eoniums. The soil is nice and flat. So what happened when you do that? Look, I already did those. Then you put your cutting. So easy to propagate. See? So that way you don't have to break the, the little baby head. See how easy? And you can grab one of those. This is the main head. You just put it in one of the holes of the pot. So that way you don't hurt the babies. Gotcha. This is some good information, Manny. So Manny, all of these in this row, you have propagated yourself, you and your staff. It is correct. You can see we have the pile of pots. Prepare the area, lay them out, put a little baby cutting. Three months from now, you have a beautiful plant. Wow. And they're going to be so gorgeous. Oh, yeah. These varieties of aeoniums, highly recommend you, Kelly, for your pot. Manny, they bloom too, right? Do all aeoniums bloom? Well, this is another good message for you and people, Kelly. Aeoniums, they eventually provide such a beautiful cone, bright yellow flower. And why is good? Because once it is done blooming, let the flower die, collect the flower, throw the dead flower on top of a planter, and you will see a lot of babies germinating. And some of those, they're going to be hybrids because you don't know what bees and butterflies they brought from other neighborhood of pollen, so you get new hybrids. That is absolutely beautiful about nature and plants and uh, how they're so adaptable and easy to propagate and sometimes on their own without our help. Let me show you the babies. <laughs> Remember I told you once the flower is dead, grab the flower, throw them on top of a pot with soil and look the baby's killy. Whatever is growing different than the mother, that's how you're gonna get new hybrids. Wow, so we can just take the dried blooms and sprinkle it and get babies like this. This is an example, over 200 babies right here from a dead flower. That is fantastic. So Manny, is this the mother? This is the mother plant of those babies that I show you, wow. Kelly. This is the mother. So whatever is going to look different from those babies to the mother, those are the new hybrids. That is amazing because she's such a different color from her babies. And remember some of those babies, some of those they look like the mother, but many of them, they look different, right? AC, compadre, always a pleasure to do business with you guys. Brian, David, everybody from Hava Tough Gardens and the area, the Pacifico, Pebble Beach, Carmel, Bay Area. Don't hesitate. Give them a call. Give all a call. Keep promoting this beautiful revolution. Drought tolerant stuff. Never maintenance. Never maintenance. Woo! So Manny, for homeowners and business owners who want to add succulents and with aeoniums, what plants, combinations can they do in containers or hanging pots or even in the ground um, that's going to complement each other? I always recommend people, and I also, the reason why I grow this plant a lot is because this is a very survival plant, very sociable plant that works together really good with Aeoniums, especially when you use a little darker color with a little lighter color to give the right contrast and this cascade over the pot and that one it'll be the focal point. Oh that's beautiful because these ruby necklace they've got those beautiful yellow flowers that will complement. That is excellent. I highly recommend this to you Kelly for your pot. Yeah and these are really easy to propagate as well. Same, right? same thing. 
every little branch you cut, put them in a different pot and it'll give you another plant. And also share with neighbors, cuttings. I love to do that. Friends, I love to share. Brothers, sisters, everybody. Perfect. String of pearls that I also use with the onions. The onions is the focal point in the pot. String of pearls to cascade. There is also lots of varieties like blue serum, green serum. We have like the ground cover cotyledon, ice plant. Um, a lot of those type of small ground covers that you can add to your pot. So you can make your pot look a little more... A little more dramatic, a little more fun, a little more cheery. And who that's like correct. That? Okay, Kelly. So now let me show you. This is a crest formation my friend Rose gave me. So you can see onions, they also give you a crest formation. Do you see the crest? And the crest is growing a lots of babies. So sometimes if you don't want to see the babies, if you want to see a clean crest, let me show you right here. This is another good example. Do you see the crest? This is a two color crest aeonium. Sometimes they come variegated and that's another good example. So aeoniums, they are unique plants that they give you lots of surprises, Kelly. That is really, really neat. And now, is there anything that you can do to make them crest? A uh, very good question. Aeoniums, in my knowledge, um, let's explain this to you, Kelly, what the real true about the crest formation. Obviously, in humans, is called albino. It happens one out of 10,000 kids, you might have a chance to have an albino kid. Same thing on deer, same thing on, on dolphins, same thing on lions, same thing on cactus, same thing on agaves. So agaves, they give you an albino. Uh, cactus, they give you a crest like this. That's a crest, so it's considered an albino. Aeoniums, they give you a crest like this. So it's an albino, let's call it that way. But in order to make replicas, you got to do clones. Cut little pieces of the crest in order to make replicas. And that's how you propagate so many crest formation oh, of wow. the Ionium family. I just love learning about succulents. This is fantastic, Manny. Thank you. Thank you too, Kelly. Take this one, Kelly. I give you the pink oh, Ionium. Oh, Manny, I really don't need. Well, it's yours. It's yours. I got to give you a nice Ionium. Yeah. So just put them in the jar somewhere where it's going to do good and that's yours Annie yeah thank you so much